Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Avengers, the Age of Ultron, to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in the movie really are. We got Avengers, Age of Ultron we're doing right now, and then next week I'll be releasing Infinity War. Okay, with that, let's get started. Jarvis, what's the view from upstairs? The central building is protected by some kind of energy shield. Strucker's technology is well beyond any other Hydra base we've taken. That is like a really cool idea, but unfortunately satellites don't work that way very well. Satellites have the full capabilities of like imaging at that resolution and detecting like gamma rays or any sort of like super concentrated form of like really any sort of molecule you can, you can really think of. Trouble with that is that the satellite needs to be directly above or at least within range of its view of whatever it is you're trying to find. If the satellite is not actually in range of that part of the earth, then you have like a billion dollars just floating in space doing nothing. That's why whenever you see satellites, you normally see satellite images because getting a live feed from one of them is very, very difficult because for one, you have to have the satellite position directly above where it is you want to image and then you need to have it playing like precisely at the moment that you want to view what you're trying to see through it. Granted, Tony Stark probably has like multiple of these satellites all around the Earth so that you can cover every geographical location that you can think of and that would do the trick. That way you can have images of the entire Earth and see whatever you want, whenever you want. Lab's all set up, boss. Oh, well, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. What's the word on Strucker? That is spoken like a true engineer. Like, we really are the Oompa Loompas of science. There is a discussion to be had about like, who's actually more valuable in terms of like a combat. Like, is it the guy who designs the guns? Or is it the person who fires the guns? Because even engineers who work on like cars, we are horrible mechanics. Like, if something goes wrong, you take it to like a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer, and they're like, hey, what's going on with my car? I promise you majority of them will have no idea how to fix it. So developing technology is one thing, but the user of that technology has the ability to be more creative because they can think far outside of the box than the person who's developing it could ever could. The scepter is alien. There are elements I can't quantify. So there's elements you can. The jewel appears to be a protective housing for something inside. Something powerful. Like a reactor? Like a computer. I believe I'm deciphering code. It is a really tough thing to say that something is like alien because technically to whatever we found in outer space, we are alien to them. Composition wise, the elements that are currently on the periodic table make up majority of what we know of in the current universe. That doesn't mean that there's more yet to be found. I mean, in fact, we can artificially create, I say we as if I'm one of those people, but scientists who do this research can artificially create new elements and there's really no limit. I mean, the more protons that you throw into a nucleus, it just keeps on creating newer and newer elements. Granted, the larger elements are not nearly as stable as the smaller ones. Like, the smaller the element is, usually the more abundant you'll have it. So the smallest one that we know of, hydrogen, the second smallest, helium, they are everywhere. Like, those elements exist all over space, all over Earth. It's, like, they're abundant beyond what you could ever believe. The large elements like uranium are far less common. Whatever we find in outer space, it's likely that it exists on our periodic table because the larger the element is, the less stable it is. So we don't actually predict that whatever can come through our atmosphere, we'd be able to survive it if it was such a large element to begin with. Are you sure he's gonna be okay? Pretending to need this guy really brings the team together. There's no possibility of deterioration. The nanomolecular functionality is instantaneous. His cells don't know they're bonding with simulacrum. She is creating tissue. Well, I'll tell you, like, this is, this is actually real. Like, laser therapy is a thing. But as far as I know, the most common regeneration, like, technique is using stem cells if you've had, like, some serious injury. Whenever you're experiencing some sort of injury, your body is already producing a lot of energy to heal yourself and like promote cellular regeneration as quickly as possible. How that works is that the mitochondria inside of your cells, or the powerhouse of cells because everyone knows that word, they will create adenosine triphosphate or ATP, and that's the energy that your body will use to actually 
create new tissue because let's say you have like a paper cut or something your body will actually continue to promote cellular regeneration and that's how you just build new layers and layers on top of the cut area if you shoot photons of light at yourself actually you will promote the cellular regeneration process and the way that laser therapy works is it's pretty much shooting photons in a very specific area and it's promoting cellular regeneration in that one area faster than they normally would. Now, you're not a plant, so it's not like the more light they shine on you or the more consistent the light is that you'll just heal like insanely faster. It's just that light will actually promote your mitochondria and cellular respiration so that you can produce more energy. So it's not actually doing anything new. Like the light from the laser is just doing whatever your body does, but faster. So you're going for artificial intelligence and you don't want to tell the team. That's right. You know why? Because we don't have time for a city hall debate. I don't want to hear the man was not meant to meddle medley. I see a suit of armor around the world. That is, I think, a discussion that needs to be had about artificial intelligence. Like, it's, it's very difficult. In fact, I think it's impossible to stop innovation. Like, one way or another, it, it will be done. I mean, you can slow it down. You can speed it up, but in terms of just like prevent people from developing new technology, I don't think that's possible. During Elon Musk's podcast with Joe Rogan, they talked about how artificial intelligence should be controlled and governed so that it's not used as a weapon. He used the example of seatbelts and cars. It took over 10 years to make it a law that all cars needed to have seatbelts in them. This 10 year window has no effect on artificial intelligence. I mean, you can't wait that long when it comes to these computer programs. Like, they're just too fast. And we're not very far from creating sentient AI. There's, there's already far more computer intelligence than human intelligence in the world. And like, well, one example of that, right? So imagine that you're reading a book, okay? There's no possible way that you can read every book that was ever written like throughout time, even if that's all you did your whole life, you didn't eat, sleep, you just read books forever. However, if those books were to be put into like digital copies, for example, the artificial intelligence could easily tell you the plot of all of them. And it could reference every page, every word, every comma, semicolon, it'll know all of everything that can be in that whole library of material. You can even see this now with computers like Deep Blue, which is an IBM developed computer to play chess. And it played against the world champion at the time who was I believe Gary Kasparov. This is before Magnus Carlsen, so I think this is Gary Kasparov. And he played the supercomputer and all he knew how to do was chess. And I think he beat it once, but I believe he lost two out of three times. So the question of can a computer already trump a human when it comes to like our intelligence levels, like easily no questions asked, like you can make a computer for a task that can easily outsmart even the best human on the planet. Whoever can get to the weaponized AI first, they have control of the whole world like easily. I mean, there's nothing even close to that level of weapon. But computers have already passed humans in terms of intelligence. What they have not done is surpassed humans in terms of creativity. Because computers can only do what you tell them to do. They actually can't go outside of their frame of reference because all they know are ones and zeros. But humans know pretty much the rest. Yeah, that's, that's not good. A comet that size hitting the Earth would do some serious damage. When you have to worry about comets striking the Earth, it's actually less of a concern like where it hits. Because like in that radius of like the um, like explosion impact, for example, like because they don't release a shock wave when it actually makes contact with the surface, that it's, it's not going to be good. But what you're really concerned about is setting off seismic activity because something of that size just hurling down like if it hits a fault line for example that is what could set off multiple earthquakes or tsunamis around the globe that's what happened when the dinosaurs went extinct in one of the great extinction periods is that when the comet struck the earth it set off volcanic activity and the volcanoes are what killed everything the comet itself was more or less like the spark but it it wasn't the impact that would be killing everyone it was the 
like earthquakes and tsunamis and the volcanoes going off, that's what would damage the Earth. And that does it for Age of Ultron. Engineering-wise, is Ultron possible? Yes. It is ultimately a reality that sentient artificial intelligence can be created and Ultron-like people, computers, whatever you want to, like robots, call those things. It's certainly a possibility. On a brighter note, <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know what, what of a transition, right? But I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if there's anything else that you want me to like watch or commentate over, or, like explain further in this one, because I know there was a, quite a few things I had left out. Go ahead, put in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And next week, I'll be uploading Avengers Infinity War. Thank you guys for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.